We conducted a post hoc analysis of the pivotal POISE 3 trial that led to recent FDA approval of abectacolic acid for the treatment of unmet therapeutic need in primary biliary cholangitis, or PBC, an autoimmune disease of the liver, which if untreated is progressive and leads to premature liver-related death, complications, or liver transplant. Now, abectacolic acid is a bile acid that has been modified. And the natural bile acid from which it's modified is the actual hormone that stimulates the pharnesoid receptor called FXR for short, that mediates a whole host of gene expression events. And as a consequence, this bile acid has been modified as therapeutically targeting the turning on of the FXR events. And that's its therapeutic potential. Now in PBC, we are grateful that 20 years ago, we developed the therapy, urso deoxycholic acid, urso for short, that benefits patients, retarding their progression, preventing premature liver-related death and need for transplant in about 65%. However, there's an unmet need, obviously, for the 35 to 40% that either do not achieve that result with Urso or are intolerant of Urso and can't take it at all. And this is where the abectacolic acid approval is so important because it leads the, these patients to have an alternative to retard and prevent those bad outcomes. Now, cirrhosis is an endpoint for virtually all liver diseases. And in PBC, you may have early disease, pre-cirrhotic disease, you may have cirrhotic disease. And within cirrhotic disease, you may have early to advanced cirrhotic disease. In cirrhosis, we know that hepatic impairment of metabolism and distribution and even response to drugs can be important. And that's why we chose to do this post hoc analysis to look at the compensated cirrhotics that were actually enrolled and treated in the POISE-3 trial as a isolated group. And we did so by identifying, using very stringent criteria of liver biopsy uh, or transient elastography adjusted for high range kilopascals that are required to diagnose cirrhosis in cholestatic liver diseases and identified 36 patients that were distributed, as you might imagine, in the placebo group that took the baseline urso they'd been on and then the two arms receiving abectacolic acid. When we look at the high level information from this study, we find that with respect to safety, there were no new safety signals that were not seen in the trial at large and then in the non cirrhotic group. The dominant safety signal was an adverse event of puritis that had been seen in the study, and it is manageable. We did not have any increase in SAEs, however, there were SAEs, but there weren't an increase in drug-related treatment emergent SAEs because cirrhotics are more prone to have serious adverse events than pre-cirrhotic patients. And finally, the tolerability overall was great, with the exception, seen also in non-cirrhotics, of two patients in the highest dosed arm, which is actually not the dose currently used and recommended, that dropped out due to that puritis. Now, efficacy was identical in this subgroup to the overall population, and that was about 55% at 12 months had met the composite endpoint. Now, in cirrhosis, it's very interesting if you subdivide out the endpoints. There was a reduction of alkaline phosphatase, the composite initial endpoint. There was a reduction in GGT, but in the placebo group, the GGT went up substantially in the same period of time. The bilirubin that went up in the placebo group to a worrisome level in all treated patients dropped below the upper limit of normal, which is an important independent factor uh, for risk of progression. And we had reductions in both AST and ALT. So in summary, these compensated cirrhotic patients showed the same tolerability, the same safety profile, and the same efficacy leading us to conclude that they can be safely treated with this drug for the indications of the FDA unmet need. Now, what about the decompensated cirrhosis? 
We know that the microcirculation and the modeling of the FDA suggests that the, that degree of hepatic impairment will lead to changes in pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. And thus, they are developing through those models and with Intercept Pharmaceutical guidance as to the dose and the interval between doses to compensate for this impact of that degree of hepatic impairment.